In this video, I'm going to be talking about hydrogen bonding. Now, hydrogen bonding is a type of intermolecular force. Uh, if you wanted to see as as um, we could just say hydrogen bonds. It's a type of intermolecular force, and this is similar to the permanent dipole-dipole forces which I talked about in the last video. Um, except these these hydrogen bonds are stronger than permanent dipole-dipole forces. And now hydrogen bonds usually occur when hydrogen is bonded to highly electronegative elements. And the three main elements which, which we're going to be looking at um, are, are um, nitrogen, um, fluorine and oxygen. And if we actually go over and look at the periodic table, we have circled them here. Uh, nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine are very close to the top right of the periodic table. And in my video about electronegativity, I talked a bit about the fact that electronegativity is really high up at this corner. And so these are three of the most um, electronegative elements. Chlorine is actually more electronegative than nitrogen, but the hydrogen bonds between in, in, in molecules involving hydrogen and chlorine um, are not as strong. And I'll explain why later on in this video. Anyway, so going back to this. What happens is, if we actually take a look at these molecules I have here, what happens is, I'll take a look first at this um, water molecule. Water molecule. Uh, what happens is, this slightly positive hydrogen here, since it's become so, since, since this is so electronegative, it's really, really been greedy with the electrons which it's meant to be sharing. And what happens is the hydrogen becomes so positively charged that it almost comes close to forming a dative covalent bond. And the way the way it become, comes really close to this is it is attracted to, to um, elements which have lone pairs. And typically the elements in these substances which have the lone pair is the substance, this, this, the electronegative element that the, hydrogen, that the hydrogen is bonded to. So this hydrogen we have here is bonded to this oxygen and so this hydrogen if we were to draw a well i won't actually draw it on i'll try and copy and paste this copy and paste oh no wrong paste let me let me try this again copy and paste okay so now i have another water molecule here and what happens is this almost forms a a dative covalent bond so as you can see I've got this hydrogen um, pretty much almost in this lone pair but not quite so it doesn't actually quite get to that point where it's actually sharing um, electrons but it comes quite close and it forms a hydrogen bond so if I draw the hydrogen bond in light blue what we'd have here is a hydrogen bond so this is the um, the intermolecular attractive force. So this force here is quite strong. And this would happen with these molecules I have here as well. I have nitrogen um, bonded to three hydrogens. And you may be familiar with this molecule. This molecule is ammonia. Um, uh, ammonia. No, ammonia. There's an N. Ammonia. And this molecule here, which I've got, which is hydrogen fluoride. Hydrogen fluoride. And these are all can be considered to be hydrides. So basically um, hydrogen bonded to um, other elements, which usually group five, six, seven. So anyway, Looking at this, what we can see here is that all three of these molecules have, well, I'll put the HF in view. All three of these molecules have lone pairs of electrons. So we can see that this, this, this fluorine here has three lone pairs of electrons. And this nitrogen has a lone pair. And this oxygen has a lone pair. And this lone pair is one of the essential features to enable hydrogen bonding to occur. And I'll be taking a closer look at that in a different video. Now one of the interesting things which water molecules do because of this hydrogen bonding is that when you actually freeze it 
you may you probably you've probably maybe seen ice ice cubes in a drink like maybe a fizzy drink or something and ice cubes tend to float at the top of the drink and the reason for this is because ice is less dense than water and ice is less dense than water because if you actually look at this um lattice i have here and this is a lattice caused by um frozen water molecules or frozen h2o molecules forming ice this is ice uh, these grey dashed lines are hydrogen bonds and when you freeze water it forms ice and the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules freeze and it forms this lattice structure. Now hydrogen bonds are quite long as you can see and because of its length uh, what happens is that these bonds freeze in their long position and that causes ice to be the water molecules in ice to be more spread out than they are in water and so because of that ice is less dense than water okay so what i have here is um three graphs and these are graphs of trends and the trends which i have here are trends in boiling points trends in boiling points Maybe you put an S at the end here. Trends in boiling points. Or boiling point. Oh, it doesn't really matter. So I have hydrides here. So group 5 hydrides, group 6 hydrides, and group 7 hydrides. And the first thing you probably notice is that this trend sort of goes down and up, down and up, down and up. And it happens for all three of the graphs. Now the reason behind this trend is that NH3 here forms hydrogen bonds. Um, whereas pH3, ASH3 and SBH3 do not. H2O forms uh, bonds, hydrogen bonds, whereas H2S doesn't, H2SC doesn't and um, H2TE doesn't. And if you look here, HF um, forms strong hydrogen bonds, whereas HCl, the hydrogen bonds that it forms are much, 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 much weaker than the ones in HF. So as you can see, the boiling point is lower. Though this does form very, very, very weak hydrogen bonds. And since they're so weak at AS level, we don't really um, see HCl as a molecule which has hydrogen bonds between them. So yeah. Now, if you actually look closer at this trend, you, you may notice that it goes up again. And it even goes up to the point where this HBS3 has a high, higher boiling point than the NH3. And... Um, a similar thing almost happens here between uh, the H2TE and H2O. Now the reason for this, and in order to explain why this happens, I'm going to be actually take a look at the periodic table. So if I go up, bear in mind we've got pH3, this is group 5. So N and we've got the P and the AS and the SP. What we notice is that the, the, the atomic number increases quite significantly as we go down the period or where as we go down the group and the reason for this is big well the the significance of this is um that as the number of electrons increase we need to bear in mind that van der waals forces are still acting between these molecules van der waals forces act between nearly all molecules and these molecules are no exception so as we go along the number of electrons increase in in this element here so this element, this element, this element. And because of that, the strength of the van der Waals forces increase. And as you can see in this graph, they increase up to the point that this has a higher boiling point than NH3. Because when you've got loads of electrons, van der Waals forces can be, can be very strong. And the similar trend is shown here and here. Now, if I was to draw a line to compare the boiling points of these um, elements, which are participating in hydrogen bonding so maybe let me choose a pen color i'll actually just do it in gray so h2o as we can see has the highest boiling point so i'm gonna draw a line going towards the right just so that you can compare compare the relative boiling points and nh3 if i draw a line for nh3 Try not try to go straight. So as you can see, NH3 has a lower boiling point than HF. 
ever so slightly. And HF has a lower point, boiling point than H2O. So as you can see, the, 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 the order of boiling points here we have is H2O, then HF, then NH3. Now, the reasons for this, I don't want to go into in this video because this video is mainly focused on the idea of hydrogen bonding. Uh, but I will make a video specifically to talk about that trend which we can see uh, between the difference in boiling points of these three elements. I mean these three, those three molecules. So yeah, that's basically hydro hydrogen, that's basically an overview of hydrogen bonding and these are the trends. And um, I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video.